Hey guys, welcome back to Rewild, where we talk about environment, psychology, and other interesting things. And for today's video, I wanted to chat with you folks a little bit about the concept of simplicity. I have been meditating on the concept of simplicity lately for my own life, and I found it's given me a lot of great benefits. So I thought I'd share a couple tips and tricks that have been helping me lately, in case they help you on your journey as well. So for the first concept I would like to share with you on simplicity, it's this simple fact that not a lot of people like to acknowledge, and that is that most of us are very bad at multitasking. There are a few tasks in this world that we sort of can multitask, things like folding laundry while listening to a podcast, but for things that require deeper focus and attention in our work, we really need to focus on just one thing at a time. Another concept that I think is important for increasing our simplicity and understanding the importance of that is the fact that most of us can only focus on so many things within a to-do list. And this was actually the impetus for this video was my to-do list just getting very, very long and a little bit overwhelming to think about. So towards the end of this video, I'll give you a solution that I discovered that has helped me out with this a lot. Something that people tend to do is we tend to think about multiple things at once. And I think that putting it on a separate piece of paper, getting it out of your head and getting it on paper is one of the best ways that we can sort of get ourselves to a better place. Um, some of the areas of our lives that require simplifying are pretty varied. Everything from your physical home, like cluttered drawers and places like that, to uh, your schedule, people that you spend time with, the things that you decide matter in your life, your daily to-do list, as we already talked about, and digital clutter, even areas like our cars and things that um, might sort of be far and away and out of sight, out of mind until we hop in them and see that it could use a little bit of tidying or decluttering. Decluttering also happens in the mind when we have a lot of ruminating too fast thoughts and I think um, mindfulness meditation, also known as Zazen meditation, is probably one of the best ways to learn how to slow your thoughts down and get to a place where you can kind of just focus on one thing at a time again within your consciousness. I did a really long uh, two-part series on meditation for people who are interested in that. Um, but getting to our to-do list and a way that we can simplify that uh, one thing that I have found, and there's this concept um, people talk about in the mental health community called spoons, and the spoon analogy is this idea that we only have so many spoons per day, we only have so much energy per day, and that eventually those spoons will run out based on whatever we allocate them to. It's just like money or time. When it comes to our energy, we need to learn to budget it. And if you only have so many spoons in a day, that can run out quickly. This analogy often applies to people with um, mental or physical disabilities because not everybody has the same amount of spoons when they wake up in the morning. So if you are someone who is suffering from burnout or might be just sleep deprived temporarily, you will inevitably have less spoons than you did before or than your neighbor. So it's good to know what our personal spoon limit is when we're planning our day. So for me, this I also think of this as like connected to executive function. Sometimes we'll talk about people who are struggling with certain executive function things. If you have something like ADHD or if you use the internet, internet a lot in general, you can kind of lean into symptoms like that where being distractible can really impact you. And there has been a lot of research that has showed that being able to focus and being able to see a task to completion is actually a huge predicator of other levels of success in our lives from relationship success to personal fulfillment and financial success as well. So learning to focus is one of the best investments, I think, that you can make in your personal consciousness. And part of that ability, I think, is simplifying. The other really important thing that I think a lot of us don't take enough time out for is understanding what is important. And I know that sounds so simple and basic, but we can really quickly deviate from that. Say your health is very important. If your health collapses, 
you can't do very much work. But if you have a deadline coming up and you're stressed out about it, you might skip going to the gym all week in order to meet that deadline. I'm a little guilty of that today, actually. I'm going to go work out after these video series. But, um, you know, we tend to think that sometimes urgency trumps long-term importance. And it's really important that you start to build a life where you allocate that time for yourself every day to take care of yourself even and especially when something stressful might be going on, like an upcoming deadline or a move. Um, in the meditation communities, I've been a part of a cute little phrase that is sometimes said, I think in the Zen community, is if, you, if you're used to meditating and if you feel fine, meditate every day for about 20 minutes. And if you feel like you don't have time to meditate, you should meditate for an hour every day. And the kind of tongue-in-cheek joke there is that the concept of not having enough time is a mental one, not a real one. It's a invented construct that at the end of the day, um, the sky will not fall if you don't fold the laundry today. And the sky will not fall if you miss a certain deadline even, potentially. Um, but if you constantly live in a state of stress and anxiety and more and more and more doing, 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 and you never sit down just to breathe or take care of yourself or go to the gym when you need to or take a day off, eventually that could catch up with you and harm your health. So it's very, very important to put the things that keep you going at the top of your to-do list every day and I have to admit, it took me years to figure this out, and I'm still not very good at it sometimes. It's very easy to sacrifice breakfast in the morning or your morning exercise routine, or for me, you know, time with my cat or my pet if I feel like I need to accomplish something real, you know, something that's profitable or productive or that has a deadline that's external. Um, this is not the way to live. This is a recipe for a burnout. So I really encourage people to think about what's important in your life, not just financially, not just in your career or your academics, but in terms of your relationships, because that's very important for your health. And in terms of, you know, th really basic things like getting enough sleep, eating enough, eating the right things and taking time out for meditation or other types of recreational kind of slow uh, living activities. Sometimes the things that are not productive, things that spark our creativity, our hobbies, things that require no critique or improvement, you know, those can be really nourishing for the soul and important to put at the top, not the bottom of your schedule. Sometimes these things, if we put them at the bottom of our to-do list, we can go years without ever doing them. And I speak from experience on that too. It's important to ask yourself what really feeds and nourishes your soul and make sure that those are the things that you allocate time for at least every week, if not every day. So as promised, I'll give you the one little tip that has helped me this past month with improving my to-do list. And that is a combination of bundling tasks and habit stacking. What habit stacking is, is when you have a daily habit, like brushing your teeth every morning, you learn to attach mentally the next step in that process. So if you already have a process that is automated in your life, these are the best kinds, right? Especially for things that bring us towards our long-term goals. Automate your morning workout. Automate your hydration system. Automate um, the way you purge your emails or the way you purge digital and physical clutter in your life. When you automate these things, they no longer take up as much room in your mind, and then you can add more things in. For me, I'll give you guys an exact number. I found out that beyond about five things, I'm a little bit useless, actually. And beyond three into the next future, I might not I could get distracted, <laughs> you know, like I use the internet a lot, which puts you at risk for developing symptoms of ADD. And I kind of think that, you know, I'm probably not alone with my millennial cohort, that if you just keep stacking too many things on that list, eventually you're just thinking about all of them anyway, and it's really hard to settle down. So for me, every day I try to put no more than about five or six chunks of things to do in a single day. 
And then if I have more, I slot them in into these categories. So maybe one of those chunks is digital computer work. So if I want to declutter something, if I want to produce content, um, if I have email messages to respond to, those all live in the same block of time. Um, so I'm not task switching too much. And in my mind, rather than having five tasks I'm thinking about I have to do on my computer, it's just that one task of computer time. And then within that is a slotted kind of like mental file system of the next five things in that category. Now that's not for everybody, but for me personally, it gave me a way to increase my to-do list without increasing the bandwidth, so to speak. Um, and going back to how I plan the next like hour to three hours, I really only stick to like three things. You know, get dressed, get your cup of coffee, write out your day plan. Only a few things for your next few minutes. Some people will even narrow this down to a single thing using something called the Pomodoro technique. And that's a really neat way that you can um, explore, you know, just setting a timer and only thinking about one thing at a time. So basically to recap, we organize these things into chunks and we habit stack them as much as possible. Recurring things that you have to do every day. For me, it's a small load of laundry every day loading and unloading the dishwasher every day, feeding my cats, changing their water. I actually bundle those in my mind as something that you do all at once. And that way it starts to build that habit where it becomes automatic. Now, unfortunately, you can't do all this all at once. Typically, the best way to habit stack is to start with one thing at a time. So say you're bad at flossing your teeth. If you brush every morning, but you forget to floss, and you also want to add a skincare routine and you also want to run five miles and you're not doing those five things yet, stick to the first two. Stick to the one you already have the habit for and then add just one thing until it becomes a habit. So I hope that helps somebody um, to start to organize their life. There's only so much time in the day and I think that's important for us to realize, but we all have the same 24 hours. And um especially when you're feeling stressed, if you feel like there's too much to do, really, really remember that the most important things to do are self-care because that will carry you through what is a marathon rather than a sprint. And it'll make sure that you don't have to play catch up. You know, if you get up cold or if you, God forbid, develop anxiety or depression from long-term uh, work stress, it's much better to, you know, live long and well than to, you know, burn out quickly. So um, make sure that those self-care things, whatever you need, it doesn't have to be big. For me, it's like 10 minutes of meditation and 30 minutes of yoga every day. It can be so simple. Maybe for you, it's 15 minutes of stretching and a nice green smoothie. Um, but make sure you're doing those for yourself because I think far too many of us forget. That's about all I have for today. Um, ask, oh, one more thing is always plan your day. This is another thing that's kind of like obvious that I think a lot of us skip over, but my best days of work are the days that I sit down in the morning and I think about what I want to do and ideally have planned most of the day the night before. I like to use this thing called the High Performance Planner by Brendan Bouchard. I'll put a link to that in this. This isn't sponsored by him by any means, but um, it is a really great planner. I've been using it for years. It's one of my favorites. I'm working on a planner um, that's going to be based around natural circadian rhythms and getting back into ecological consciousness. So that'll be a more niche um, product that will be available on my website soon. Um, and yeah, if this helped you out or inspired you at all, leave a note in the comments. What is something that you are going to simplify in your life today? I know we talked a lot about to-do lists, but your simplification can be really anything um, in your life. It could be limiting certain things in your schedule, learning to say no to invitations that are not for you. Um, it could be simplifying a specific area of your home or of your workflow. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What is it that you are working on simplifying in your life? And what is your game plan that you're going to use to execute on that? All right, we'll see you next time. Take care.